to know. Last time we took a look at the current ratio, which was simply current assets divided by current liabilities. And one of the things that we found was it didn't take into account the composition of our current assets. A dollar of cash, for example, is a lot more readily available to pay the bills than a dollar worth of slow-moving inventory. This weakness is resolved to some extent by the next ratio we're going to have a look at. That is the quick ratio, also known as the acid test. In the last class, we did have a quick word to say about different ratios and what categories they fall under. In case you've missed that one, I'll just quickly run through it again. So ratios will tend to fall under three categories, liquidity, solvency, and profitability. And the acid test or quick ratio is a measure of liquidity. Liquidity generally refers to our short-term ability to pay our debts as they fall due. The quick ratio specifically is an indicator of our immediate short-term liquidity. The calculation is cash plus marketable securities plus our net receivables divided by our current liabilities. This time, even though we're up in the current assets, we're going to exclude things like inventory and prepaid expenses. Cash and current receivables are considered to be far more liquid. So your stock might be slow moving or there might be a lot of it there. Prepaid expenses very often can't be transferred to anyone else. So we're really looking at things which are highly liquid. They're called generally quick assets, being that they're quickly converted into cash. To calculate this ratio, we're going to head back to our bundle of financial statements which have been provided to us from our accountant. And we're looking for our statement of financial position, also known as the balance sheet. Now, as with the last clip, I'm actually going to use an actual example of a Central Coast retailer who's been trading for around 12 months. And we can see here that up in his current assets, he has a few things there, including something called other. Now, just looking at this, we're not entirely sure what that is. So we head across and we see that there's a little number there. And that number actually refers to the note in the notes to the financial statement. So we'd look up what number 13 to see what that is actually made up of. I actually have a detailed, his detailed balance sheet here as well. So I can see that that is prepaid borrowing expenses. So looking down the current assets, we're interested in his cash. We're interested in receivables. We're going to exclude inventory and exclude our other expenses, which we know is made up of prepaid borrowing costs. Add those figures together and divide it by our total current liabilities, which should be the same figure which we use to calculate the current ratio. And we can see this gives us a quick ratio of 1.19. A quick ratio of 1.19 tells us that if our retailer had to pack up shop tomorrow, he has $1.19 worth of quick assets, that is those assets which are quickly convertible into cash, to cover each dollar of current liabilities. Ideally, you'd like to see a quick ratio of one to one or higher, although this varies somewhat between industries. You'll notice that food retailers often have a lower quick ratio. Generally, a higher quick ratio, though, is better and indicates that a business is better able to meet its current obligations on very short notice. The quick ratio, like the current ratio, does have its limitations. It is only one measure of liquidity, and so you wouldn't use it on its own. You might actually have highly convertible stock, which we've excluded here. On the other hand, receivables may not be able to be realised as quickly as you'd hoped. And of course, it's using figures from a particular point in time. And that's it for our second class on ratios to note. 
Join us next time and we'll take a look at some more.